the record. And there goes the encoder. And you are good to go. Welcome back to another Page Turner with Big Dog and Little Stuff. I'm Stephanie Menard. I am Tom Hutchison. Hi. What's up? I don't know. What's up with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I can see you're, uh, you're doing a little better with your teeth things. A little bit. I don't, I still don't think I sound right. And I, but I don't really, I have to wear them for like 15 weeks. So I don't really have a choice. <laughs> right, I mean, there, either... there's, there's a little weirdness, but it's not, I don't think it's that, <laughs> you know, I think people that, that, that know you and are used to you might hear it, but you know, yeah, most, I don't know. most are, it's, it's so slight that I don't think most are going to even notice. Well, I'm, I'm glad I, I definitely, uh, I noticed that, but it is what it is. We're here. We're talking. Life goes on. <laughs> <laughs> so how have you been, Tom? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Just, uh, you know, as always gearing up for what's next. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's basically the, the life of the comic book creator is just, you know, you're gearing up for what's next, whether you're creating or whether you're fulfilling or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't really stop. So, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've got, we've got a bunch of stuff that's, that's happening. Um, Princess versus zombies is at the printer. Uh, the critter 10 year anniversary hardcover is going to the printer. Um, we just shipped out all of our, uh, special underwear day variants that we did. Uh, you know, so there, there's all kinds of stuff. And then this weekend, well, tomorrow, um, tomorrow starts, uh, well, it starts two things. Um, that kind of work together. It, it starts our um, our Kickstarter for comic uh, for spinoff comics, um, which is the the sixty four page anthology that I'm doing with Wendy Shaner and uh, C B Zane. Um, which for those that uh, that know um, what I'm doing, uh, it's the spinoff from Critter for Catnip. Um, and, but then the larger thing that we're doing is uh, called Comic Unity which is the event, the sort of the umbrella event that, that you know, goes over the Kickstarter. Um, mm -hmm. And the event is going to be basically, you know, broken down into panels, kind of like this, live, live stream panels and so on, um, that we're going to do throughout the entire month of the campaign. Um, and basically what we're trying to do is create a, some semblance of a, uh, you know, a comic convention feeling through mm -hmm. the Kickstarter campaign, which, you know, some of the stuff you'll get will be like lanyards and badges and, you know, just, you know, convention style swag, you know, the big, the big oversized bags and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then the panels and the panels, um, the interesting thing about the panels and, and you and I should talk about this a little bit too, is um, it's not just me and Wendy. It's not just the people making the book. So right. we have guys lined up to do these panels that have nothing to do with the book itself, but they are in the community of, of creating comics. They make their own stuff. They do Kickstarters, they're artists, they're writers, they're cosplayers, they're, you know, whatever. Um, and so, and that's the whole thing is, is the, the comic unity, it's, it's comics and community combined. So you get comic unity and that's sort of the, the whole the whole thing behind the name and, and, and what we're trying to do. So um, the first panel that we'll actually, have, well, we might have one prior, but we, we have the first panel that we have actually lined up is a week from today. So it'll be the 18th. Um, and we've got a number of people who are going to come in and just talk crowdfunding, you know, what it is, why it works, um, how to make it work for you, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these guys will all have had, uh, Kickstarter successes in the pack or, or Indiegogo or, or whatever it is that they right. use. Right. Um, and so for those that don't really, the, for those that don't understand what Kickstarter is from a buyer sense, it will have information for you. And for those that are interested in crowdfunding from an actual, how do you do it? Well, you know, how does it work sense? Um, right. <laughs> we should be able to help, you know, the new folks that are trying to figure out Kickstarter as well. Awesome. So that you said that is the first panel that you're doing? That's the first panel that is officially scheduled and that's okay. next Friday. Yeah. There may be something in between um, because again, this is a, that we're setting this up so that really we can kind of do anything, anytime, any way we want because live streams, there's no limitations. It's just right. 
turn the camera on and go, man. Um, so hopefully uh, you bathe first, because the last time I was on a live stream, <laughs> I I did not bathe first, and I had to wear a hoodie because I was like, oh man, I'm I'm looking a hot mess. <laughs> yeah, bathe, you please. you you want to uh, at least have a shirt on or something, you know? Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just wrap a sheet around you at least, you know? Whatever, whatever. Just <laughs> say it's a Jedi cosplay, and you yeah, know, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever. Uh, but yeah, you know, we we um. CB and Wendy and I will be doing our own little things from time to time. We'll do things together from time to time, but we're basically opening this up so that anybody who wants to do something and be a part of the overall event can, can, we can figure out how to do it. Um, you know, we, we have the logos that you can put up in the little corner here and um, we're, we're making some people admins uh, for the comic unity Facebook page. If you guys aren't part of the page, go to Facebook, look up comic unity and it'll pop right up. It's the first thing there. Join the group. Um, we're going to be doing live stuff in there. So it'll go direct to you. We'll be doing live stuff on Kickstarter itself. Um, so we're going to really try and kind of broaden it out uh, so that, that uh, you know, everybody gets seen in as many places as we can possibly can. Plus getting as many just unique people and voices involved in doing it um, so that uh, it's, it's not just you know, one group talking to you. We want to, we want you to be able to hear from the comic book community as a whole um, versus just, Hey, it's my book, buy it. <laughs> well, how kind of you, Tom, inviting other people in to, yes. you know, <laughs> yes. to pimp their own stuff too. I like it. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting on my invite for a panel, but you know, well, that's why I just said we should talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I haven't gotten an email. Damn. <laughs> Rude. I thought we were friends, Tom, but you're on, you're on the, 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 the B list. You know? oh. oh man. Ouch. The, man, the people have been making fun of me on these shows lately and it's, it's starting to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I have thick skin. You can make fun of me. <laughs> I'll allow it. Well, well, we can, we can, like I said, we're, we're going to be doing a bunch of these things. So um, depending on, on where you want to, where you think that you're best suited to, uh, to drop in, you know, we're, like I said, we're doing crowdfunding. Um, we are doing um, like uh, character design, world building types of things, which will be kind of artistic as well as, you know, the actual creation of the character from a, from a, writing standpoint mm -hmm. um art panels writing panels we have all kinds of stuff so um whatever you feel like you might want to uh to do or if you have an that's the other thing too is if anybody's watching and you have an idea for a panel that you want to do um you all can message me too and be like hey can we do a thing like this mm -hmm. and, and then we can figure out how to integrate it into into the overall plan yeah well one of the things that I think um, when it comes to panels that's kind of lacking that, I mean, yes, there are other resources, like you can Google like examples of this, but um, I get a lot of questions about uh, actually writing the script, like how to- The format? The formatting of scripts. Uh, sure. And I know that there is not like- you know, a general, like, there's not like just one way to do it. Right. Um, there are preferred ways that certain companies do it. Um, I've- as I've gone along, I've kind of uh, integrated certain things and, and, and like streamlined how I do my scripting, but it would have been helpful, I think, to get, you know, sitting on a panel where people were showing you how they did it and explaining why they did it that way. Sure. Instead of just looking it up, you know, you can see examples, but it's just like, okay, well, why did you choose to do it this way? Sure. You know, so I thought that might be a good idea. Well, yeah, definitely. You know, there within the context of a writing panel, there's a lot you can do from, yeah. from, from just, Hey, I'm writing a story. This is how I made my story to, like you said, the format, because, you know, if you look at a script from Alan Moore and you look at a script from, you know, Brian Bendis, they're not the same. Um, yeah. Even though they are both high end professionals, they, they just, they don't do it the same. Um so yeah, no, that, that's definitely something that, that we can uh, kind of tinker around with and, and help people understand that. Yeah, I mean, my scripts are like, they're, they're, they're nothing like what, what I generally see on, uh, on these things. I'm like, what? and to me, it's like, you guys are like doing way too much extra work here to, to make this script happen. 
Um, I mean, yeah, I it's feel... one thing. Yeah, it's one thing to be like descriptive in your like this panel is this. That's fine. But there's there's details and elements that I'm like, dude, you guys are just like taking way too much time. Now I'm sure they also have their word like formatted so that it's they're not actually doing all the work that it looks like they're doing. <laughs> you can but... do that. <laughs> what have I been doing my whole life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the program can help you, I'm sure, but I'm I'm too old and stubborn to figure out how to let the program help you do that. But yeah. it looks like it's all pointless nonsense anyway, so I just do it my way and it works. Right. Yeah, same. <laughs> so there, we just had the panel. We're, we're done. <laughs> yeah, do it your own way. Fuck it, you know. <laughs> there are no rules. Break them. Break them all. <laughs> it's 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 the Steve Jobs method, you know, just put a dent in the universe and uh and just keep going there you go i like it mm -hmm. um so there was a, and this is a little off well it's totally off topic but <laughs> i was reminded of this uh when i was on facebook earlier i don't know did you ever see the uh the netflix movie um the babysitter yes okay so apparently there is a sequel. Correct. It just came out. It just dropped today. I'm really excited. Yep. Uh, I, I'm part of a, a horror group um, on Facebook. And so there's a lot of, we, we talk about like all the new movies and I haven't seen the sequel yet, but there were a lot of people that were uh, not going to see it because Bella Thorne is in it. And Bella Thorne recently uh, did this thing through OnlyFans where she charged like $200 uh, for pay-per-view on OnlyFans and said she was going to be completely naked. And then it turns out that she was just like in her underwear. Um, so everybody was asking for a refund and now OnlyFans has changed the rules so that the people on OnlyFans can like, I think only charge up to $50 for their pay-per-view. Yeah. So it created of, a cap because she made like $2 million in like two days or something. Yeah. Yeah. And then all those people asked for refunds because they're like, I didn't get what I, I paid $200 because right. I thought I was going to see Bella Thorne nude. That's not right. what I got. So anyway, so a lot of people are boycotting this movie. Which is um, dumb. I'm just going to say it. That's dumb. And that, that's- You're welcome to boycott, but it's, it's dumb. If you, if you like the mo first movie, if you, I mean, you're already paying for Netflix anyway, if you have it. Right. She's not seeing anything extra out of this. <laughs> so just right. enjoy your movie. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I didn't even know about the sequel until like three or four days ago because they oh, didn't, okay. they haven't been advertising it at least not that I've seen. And not I absolutely, yeah. yeah, and I loved that movie. I've watched it like seven yeah. times. Um, Samara Weaving is like my it girl right now. Yeah. I just adore her. And um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But everybody's like, oh, I'm not gonna watch it because Bella Thorne. I'm like, I don't care if she's in it. I'm gonna watch it and love it anyway. I'm sure. It's. I, I mean, I get it. There are definitely actors that I'm just like, oh my God, I don't, but it's not because of like what they did externally. It's because of what they do within their, their roles. Like I just don't right. like them as whatever it is that they're doing. Um, Dave Batista is one of them. I can't stand this guy. It, everything that he's in, I'm like, uh, why is this guy being cast in anything? I don't understand it. Um, and, and so like he's in Dune. When I saw the Dune ad, I was like, is he? You're joking, right? This guy's in Dune. Yeah. <laughs> now he might not have like one of the big roles. I mean, I don't know who his character is, but yeah. um, I saw him and I was like, oh God, I don't even want to see Dune now because this doofus is in it. But um, so I get it. I understand that whole point, but I don't really, I don't get too hung up. Like I love John Cusack. The dude is a political nut job, but <laughs> I, I'll still watch his movies. You know, I don't really care what he does externally. I, I, I am one of the people that can usually separate the person from the, from the product or the art or, you know, whatever right. you want to call it. So, um, you know, I won't boycott a movie because Batista's in it, but, um, uh, you know, I might, I might, I might wait for Netflix instead of buying a ticket. <laughs> well, and, and that is your right as a yeah, consumer. Yeah, of course. You yeah, know, of course. we have to make those decisions. But yeah, I, I just felt like it's on Netflix. It's not like you're going, you're already paying, like you said, you're already paying for, for Netflix. So yeah. you're going to deprive yourself of like probably a really fun, campy movie. Yeah. Because you don't like a person that's in it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought that was worthy of discussion because some people are really like diehard. Like I don't like yeah. um, Leonardo DiCaprio and like everybody's obsessed with him. I just don't like him. Most of his movies I don't like. I just don't like him. Um, and 
people are probably going to send me hate letters now, but it's just one of those things where, yeah, I'm not going to watch that movie because I don't like him as an actor. He's probably a super nice person, but I don't enjoy most of the stuff that he's in. Um, but I think, you know, that's different. Like you said, it's different when it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. If your reasoning is, is, well, she screwed up only fans, so I'm not going to watch her movie. Right. It's, it's, I mean, I get it because you want to like support this side and be like, Hey, you know, you kind of mucked it up for them, but it's not like you're leaving your house, paying $20 for a ticket, buying right. popcorn. Like it's a different kind of thing. I get it. But at the same time, you know, I, I it, it doesn't affect, it doesn't, doesn't really bother me. I, yeah. it, I, I do understand the only fan side where they're all cheesed that, uh, you know, all of a sudden there's caps and whatever, because that's, that's, I would a, be that's a problem. That's a problem. Um, right. And, and stars, I don't even care the, the whole part about her being naked or not naked and getting, re like, I don't even care about that. But if you're going to come in and do something to, to shake up a system to a point where the system regulates itself so heavily uh, that the other people involved can't do their jobs to, yeah. to, to, to grow, uh that's that would be uh problematic so you know it's like we haven't you know what's interesting and we can translate this to comics is um there have been multi-million dollar kickstarter campaigns and mm -hmm. and indiegogo campaigns and neither of those services have come back around and been like oh we we can't we can't handle this. We can't hack it. You know, this something, you know, whatever they, they haven't tried to regulate any of it uh, in that regard. So I'm not really sure why suddenly only fan outside of maybe the refund part. Um, I'm not sure why only fans would suddenly be like, well, dude, we can't take this influx of cash. I mean, uh, <laughs> well, because it's not about the influx of cash that they got from it. It's about having to refund all the, the money refund. and the fees yeah. and all the things that they had to do. So essentially they're, they regulated it to set it up so that they wouldn't take a financial loss. And so by limiting, you know, what people can charge, if they have to do a refund or whatever those fees would be that they would lose out on, it lowers all of that for them. Sure. So sure. they're just, I mean, they're covering their own ass and I don't blame them, but yeah, what she did was, I mean, completely irresponsible and bro it broke the system. Yeah. But with Kickstarter and Indiegogo, I mean, for the most part, and I know that there have been, you know, um, some larger campaigns that have never uh, given out, you know, the the reward. There was like that famous video game one, and I can't remember the name of it right now, but like they made millions of dollars and the game never came out. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there are, you see that a little bit uh, with Kickstarter, but typically people are, you know, they're making a ton of money off of it. They're not, Kickstarter is making a ton of money. And as long as the people deliver, it's not, you know, making them look bad. They're, they're rolling in the money. They're bringing people to Kickstarter. Why, you know, it's a win-win. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm about that life. And, and one, you, of, one of these days I'll make a million dollars on Kickstarter. <laughs> I don't know how. Surely won't be for a comic, but <laughs> I'll figure well, it out. Not, none, well, actually, there, I'm trying to remember what the biggest... It was a ridiculous number. It was a ridiculous number. But but uh, Cyberfrog made a million dollars on Indiegogo. Um, Cyberfrog. Cyberfrog. I've heard of yeah. that. And I you don't know. even know what it is, though. It's, like, I've heard of it. Probably because it made all that money. Yeah. You, you don't need any to know anything else besides that. But the, the, the point of that is, is basically, guys, you know, just make your comic. I mean, make whatever you want to do. A frog right. made a million dollars. So now, granted, it's, <laughs> it's attached to a, a name in the industry and, and on and on and on, you know. Yeah. You have to put your time in, in order to grow to these types of levels. You know, Todd <laughs> McFarlane did $3 million for his spawn toy, but you know, dude's been around for, for, you know, 30 years in the industry. And he's been, um, he's been working his ass off and, yeah. you know, people were, you know, commenting about all that. And they're like, you know, why is he on, who cares who's on Kickstarter? Yeah. He's doing his own thing. Let him do his thing and don't worry about it and do your own thing. Yeah, the people and that get uptight about yeah, the people that get uptight <laughs> about that stuff aren't paying attention to to the industry as a whole. Um, publishers of all kinds use it. The music industry uses it. The movie industry uses it. It's it's not for. It is not exclusively for somebody who wants to make a vanity project. It is a right. marketing and distribution tool uh, that it, that is attached to millions of people around the world. Um, mm -hmm. 
how are you not going to to use it in, no matter where you are in the hierarchy of of anything i mean how are you not going to try and use it to at least i mean you don't even have to let's say you needed a million dollars for something and you went to kickstarter and you made i don't know 500,000 who cares you made 500,000 dollars you you marketed yourself to tens of thousands if not millions of people even if they didn't back it they they probably they saw, saw it, it. And were yeah. aware of it um, and then on and on and on and on and on. So, um, you know, Todd, Todd didn't come in and be like, Hey, I need $3 million. Yo. He was like, I think it was like 150,000. Right. And, and it turned into 3 million. So because people wanted what he had to offer right, right. and okay. So be happy for him. I'm happy for him. Good yeah. for you, dude. Yeah. You and there's no it. more you work hard. <laughs> yeah. There's no more Toys R Us. There's no more KB toys. There's yeah. no more, there is no direct mass market toy store they don't exist so everything that you're buying from from a toy standpoint for, you know generally speaking is is a short print run specialty item um even when you're buying stuff from from uh you know like godzilla toys and whatever i mean they're all coming from overseas it's imports um nothing is what it was 10 or 20 years ago and but we're we're all so hung up on on where we came from that we can't really always see it's the forest for the trees right right well and, and you know also recently too keanu reeves had uh berserker come yeah. out uh, well, it, which is which is a boom studios you yes know, we don't typically see boom uh on kickstarter and it like i couldn't go through my feed for like a week after this came out without yeah. opinions flying everywhere and the thing is again it's a, they essentially are using this as a pre, uh, like a pre-order because yes. all the books aren't even coming out until next year, like 20 or 2021 at yep. the earliest for like the first one. And there's three of them that they were, you know, they used it as a marketing tool and a pre-sale tool. Right. Why are you mad? Well, they're they, mad because it's Keanu Reeves and they think that Keanu Reeves made a Kickstarter and that's not no, the case. He Keanu Reeves wrote a comic book. Right. And took it to Boom, and Boom paid and probably a crap ton of money to get it. Yep. And they were like, okay, now what do we do with it? How do we market it? How do we sell it? And they used Kickstarter as part of their selling method. Keanu Reeves does not have a Kickstarter account right. making Kickstarters. Like, that's I not know. Happening. And anybody <laughs> but that's who... the way it's presented. Like, Ke Keanu Reeves is on Kickstarter. No, he's not. His book is through Boom. Right. And yeah. I, th you know, and even then, though, like, even if he did decide to run a crowdfunding campaign for that, like, he has always been one of those, like, stand-up human beings. Like, he's not shady. He's mm -hmm. constantly, you know, doing like good things for people he's done that his entire life mm -hmm. so why would you be mad even if he did start a kickstarter you know like people just i think get angry about all the wrong things and yes they get butt hurt in this industry over stuff that like who cares what anybody else is doing do you do well, you the best way that you can yeah and yeah i mean there are going to be things that might cause you know disruption but these things aren't those, you know, Todd McFarlane and, you know, and Keanu Reeves comic aren't going to like ruin anything that you're doing. No, Trust if anything, <laughs> it's going to bring more people to the platform. And once they understand the platform, they might hang around and end up seeing your project yep. down the line. That, that's the whole thing. In fact, Boom talked about that very specifically. Like we want to bring external people through this system to, to, to link it all the way through. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I have problems with some of the, how they did it, but not that they are doing it. Like I, the system that they chose is weird to me, but, um, the fact that they're there is not an issue to me at all. Um, right. you know, there, there's, there's nobody, it, there are so many kicks. In fact, right now there are more Kickstarters live than I have ever seen in my history of Kickstarters. It's almost like, it's like almost 250 live campaigns right now. Yeah. It's it's out of control. Um, but there's 250 campaigns and the people that have been doing campaigns regularly are still making the same money they were making. They, if not more in some cases, right. Uh, Brian Polito still made 300,000 again on lady death. Like it doesn't, the fact that there's more there doesn't affect the people that are, uh, consistently doing it because they've built a fan base. Guess what? folks? Right. It's not just about, Hey, I'm on Kickstarter. It's about building a fan base and being consistent with your work 
and and then coming back and saying, hey, I've got another one. Yeah. Those guys will follow you. You'll pick up a few more. You take another step. You take another step. You take another step. Right. Um, when when Polito started, he was not making three hundred thousand dollars on yeah. death. I mean, it's just not the way that this works. But everybody thinks that that's what it is. Um, that you just step in and and you make a ton of money and then, you know, whatever. Well, but that's. But that's not it. I mean, these people are, that's just being willfully ignorant though. Cause Correct. you can just Google any of these creators and you can see how many years they've been in the business. You can see where they started. I mean, we are living in an era, of, like we can look up anything at any time. So instead of getting angry and, and thinking like, this is how the world is, like you just walk right in and make all this money, Google these people before you start bashing them online. You know, it, people just don't care and they just want to run their mouths. And I just think it's, it's rude. <laughs> Stop being rude, people. The world is bad enough as it is. We don't need that garbage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the, the reality is, is if you're nobody and you're coming in with your first campaign and you're up against 250 other campaigns, yeah, mm -hmm. you might not get the piece of the pie that you were hoping for. Um, but fund your book, fulfill your book, cross your fingers that the people like whatever it is that you made. Right. And if they do, and you make your second one, they should follow you and you, that's how you build. Exactly. You're, yeah. You're we, gonna... We've talked about this like a million times because yeah. it, it literally is. I mean, that's just, it's that simple. You know, you just have to keep putting your best foot forward, working hard, keep improving and, you know, if what, if your product reaches enough people and they like it, it's, you'll just, you know, keep building. Yeah. It you'll eventually, time. yeah. You'll eventually have the grassroots movement. You'll start to see people talking about it, which will, people will be like, Oh, I didn't have never heard about it. What is right. this thing? And, and, and that's basically the big, that was the big dog ink method. We had zero, zero media attention when we started and everything mm -hmm. was just grassroots. It was people buying books, liking it, talking about it. Uh, the occasional tiny podcast thing, not even like this, but just like blogs from back in the day, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> people reviewing <laughs> books. Hey, I met Tom and I bought Legend of Oz and it was cool. Like that was it. That was our whole yeah. uh, thing back in the day. Um, so that's what you got to do. I mean, that's it. You just have to keep going, keep making it, make it as best as you can and hope that people are liking it. Um, and, and, that's it. And don't worry about right. anything else. I mean, just focus on what you're doing. Yeah, totally. Um, and you were talking about, you know, there's 250 projects, uh, comic projects on Kickstarter right yeah. now. And, you know, because, you know, there are no conventions and, you know, we've talked about this before. I think, you know, more people are, we're going to that platform because, sure. and using it as a sales tool, maybe not like to raise funds to make the book, but they're using it as like a pre-sale tool yep. because we don't have conventions. So, you know, it's a great way to advertise and market. Again, we've talked about that. Um, and I don't think, I think that's why we're seeing, you know, more of, more comics on uh, on Kickstarter, and again, like you said, more doesn't mean that people aren't going to get funded that have been on the platform and using it. Um, you know, my first Kickstarter, I think, I think I made my goal like five hundred dollars or whatever, and mm -hmm. now my and on my third one, my goal was like twenty five hundred. So mm -hmm. in in three, like I've already like upped it, you know, and I've hit it every time and yeah. and exceeded it, and so it's just going to keep, you know, as as we keep going, you know, that's what happens slowly, but surely, you know, just moving ahead. And it, it mm -hmm. just takes time and, and, and a little bit of effort, oh, a lot of effort. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to like go in your cave and pull the blankets over your head and be like, what have I chosen to do with my life? <laughs> <laughs> but then you, then you, you know, get your head out from under the blanket and you, you write some more and you fill your Kickstarters and you, you move on. Yeah. 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 That's it. You know, you know, it doesn't come easy in this business. And I think that's a, you know, people are just so used to walking into comic shops and seeing all these comics and going, okay, so if I write a comic, it's just going to be on the shelf. And I, you know, there we go. It, it's not easy. It's not as simple as you think. No. Um, you know, but if you really want to do it, you'll make a way. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, the the uh, the comic shop method is it's not even in my my realm of thinking. 
uh, at this point, even though I'm, I'm 10 years in, we were in stores for, for seven years before I, I broke out and said, you know, just, I'll just do this a different way. Um, mm-hmm. It is a different method. It is a different, everything's different. Uh, but if you are, uh, uh, you know, dedicated to, to what you're doing, you can make it grow without the comic book store experience. Mm-hmm. Um, because the reality is, is that even the, even the, the best small press publishers are still only selling a couple thousand units through, through diamond into retail stores. And that's, right. that's a non-sustainable method of, of selling comics when you're, you know, it's you, you're paying for your team, uh, the publisher's doing work, they're going to take a cut. You have a printer, uh, print costs, you know, all that kind of stuff. It, the 2000 is not enough to, to support you selling right. in, in the retail only realm. Um, and that's where a lot of uh, these like uh, variant covers and stuff came in because they were using them to make up the money lost through the retail side. And a lot of people don't even realize that. It's like, why are all these variants? Because they're not selling enough regular books. And that doesn't mean the book's not good. It just means that it hasn't found an audience enough yet um, within that sphere of sales that that it can support itself just purely on the one A cover thing. And almost none, I mean, even an image, there's plenty of image books that only sell, you know, like 5,000 units. And even that's a really difficult number uh, to, to deal with if all you're doing is just selling through retail, like if that is your sole you know, sales method. Um, and that's why there's the cons and online and, yeah, uh, you know, Kickstarters and Indiegogos and all that kind of stuff. So it all works together and it works fine together. Um, but for whatever reason, like I said, we're still stuck in, in the system a decade ago, 20 years ago, what it, what it was is what it's supposed to be now, but that's crazy. Right. <clears throat> Different times, man. Yeah. Things evolve and change and you just have to be willing to, to, evolve and change with them that's, yeah yeah that's life i mean it's with anything it, it doesn't just apply to comics it literally it's everything in life so comics are life well <laughs> i mean they're part of life I, I wouldn't say they're my life but i mean i love them they're like my like a child like a little baby <laughs> but i i made it myself it's my child that's, yeah, um, that's good i like that <laughs> uh have you watched the boys yet they only have like four episodes that drop the new season no i won't watch it till it's all done i i I can't do weekly anymore it doesn't make any sense to me i have friends that are the same way but i okay so what i did is i watched like i didn't normally i do like to binge but i watched like two the first night and then i watched the third one last night because I knew the fourth one was coming out today so it's like it's like mini binge watching but now I'm I still have you know now I've got another week so yeah it it just doesn't work for me anymore if I if you have my attention you're gonna get it and I'm just gonna (laughs) blast through whatever it is that we're doing um but if it's like hey that was cool and yeah come back next week it's like maybe uh I don't know (laughs) well and the third the third episode was they had like the sequence that was pretty um it was pretty intense I feel like they purposely released those three and like stopped right there because they knew that everybody would be like oh my god I have to see what happens in the fourth episode yeah so they did a good job uh you know with that but yeah I agree um I think that they're doing it because they want to keep uh like getting the numbers, you know, oh, sure. Yeah, for sure. it, it makes the most sense to, yep. to, to have people streaming and get those numbers every week. Cause they have yep. to wait for it. Now, if you put everything live right away, which prime does that with a lot of their stuff. Um, the only other thing that I've noticed that they haven't done it with is the marvelous, uh, Mrs. Maisel. Uh, they did it, I think maybe with the first season, but then the second one, they only released like one a week and that was frustrating because I was like obsessed with that show and I needed all of it to be, to be fair. <laughs> um, but yeah, they pick and choose like which shows that they, I guess their biggest ones, you know, to bring in those numbers. Oh yeah. Week. They want to, they want to drag people along too, because if it's, if it's just binged, people can binge it in a weekend and then yeah. cancel their subscription and then come back a year later and do it. But if you, if it's eight episodes, and you want to watch it as it comes out, you have to pay for two months 
right. the service. <laughs> or again, you can just wait and binge it when it's all done. And none of it makes any sense. None of the marketing of this makes any sense because if people want to just binge it, they'll pay for the month, they'll binge everything they want, and then they'll cancel it and come back a year later. But we also live at the same time in this era of instant gratification. So yeah. no one wants to be behind because there's people dropping spoilers on Facebook and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's a very weird time for, for, you know, like, like TV shows and stuff. Um, but whatever, it doesn't mean anything to me. I mean, I get spoilers and I'm just like, okay, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll watch, I'm going to watch it anyway. So who cares? Um, right. You know, I, 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 I may not appreciate it, but it's, it's not blowing anything up for me. Um, yeah, whatever. It's like uh, Star Trek Discovery is coming out again, and, and I'm all about that. I'm ready for it. And uh, it's going to be really weird being that it's set like, I don't know, a thousand years in the future or something. So it's going to be really bizarre. Um, but I'm, I'm ready for it. So, uh, you know, but again, that's another one of those. It's like a weekly thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, guys, you're killing me here. Yeah, um, I canceled uh, my CBS and I was like, well, I'll wait till the new season of Discovery comes out. So I probably will wait until all of them are out and then yep. I'll get it finish season two because I still haven't done that. <laughs> and then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll finish that and then I'll go Whoops, through all of spoiler. <laughs> I'm not worried about it because the context of it doesn't make any sense to me. So yep. it's like, whatever. Yep. Um, uh, but there are some um, like premium channels like HBO. Like, when they put out a new show, it's always been you know, like yeah, their big can, shows yeah. on Sunday, like with Game of Thrones. And uh, right now they have Lovecraft Country, mm -hmm. which has taken the slot that uh, Game of Thrones used to have. And that's always been weekly. It is, it's one of the most frustrating things though, because they always have my, like my favorite show is always on HBO and I have to wait every week. We did that for years with Game of Thrones and I just, it makes me sad. You know what's funny is there's not a single HBO show that I can think of, and I might have. I, you can you can test me, but there's not a single HBO show that I have ever liked and actually watched all the way through. Not a single really? one. And I've tried a few. Okay. Um, but none of them have I ever have I seen in any complete format. Like even Game of Thrones, I've seen. I I watched all of the final season because it's the final season. So I'm like, okay, I'll I'll watch it. Um, but of the prior whatever it was, six seasons, I a probably <laughs> saw six episodes of, of everything in the prior six seasons. Like I just, okay. I didn't care. Um, <laughs> the, all the old stuff, like the Sopranos and, and things like that. It's like, yeah. I, so HBO has never produced anything that's, that's grabbed me. Um, have you ever watched weird. Uh, Six Feet Under? It's, pro no. it's probably my favorite show of all time. Uh, it came out god like a million years ago and it, all of it is on hbo now so anybody who has not uh watched six feet under on hbo if you have it please go watch it seriously it is the most crazy entertaining bizarre show uh, i've ever seen and to this day nothing not, not game of thrones not anything else even shows that i obsessively watch like the office and nothing has ever beaten the show for me so I highly recommend that one. An oldie, but a goodie. Um, <clears throat> that was like Michael C. Hall, or is it Michael C. Hall? The guy, can't, I don't know. There's so many Michael middle initial, I don't know. I think it's Michael, the, the guy who plays Dexter. That okay. guy, that okay. was like his first really big uh, thing that he, you know, that got him on the radar. So Okay. It's good. It's good shit. <laughs> good shit. Uh, <laughs> Big Little Lies, really good. Um, I don't know if they're making any more seasons of that, but that was really good. There's a lot. I could just keep listing things. There is a lot. There is a lot, and 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 <laughs> I, I feel like there's so much that there's something that I should have. Like, like yeah. I, oh yeah, that one. Like even Deadwood. I don't know if that was HBO, but Deadwood was like yeah. something that I I feel like I should have liked, but I just couldn't. Um, it just, it, I don't know. I don't know what it was. Uh, so yeah, no, th those, uh, the HBO Showtime things, whatever, um, never, never latched onto me. Well, you know, you're too and busy weird, watching your uh, Godzilla movies. And... Well, yeah. I mean, you know, if there was a <laughs> weekly Godzilla TV show, I mean. I mean, send in, tell them. You're like, <laughs> hey, man, this would be a really hot seller. Like, you need this. 
<laughs> well, sometimes Ultra, you have to you have to ask for what you want. Sometimes you Ultraman know. was was the kaiju version of that. You know, you got your weekly episodes for Ultraman, but uh, Ultraman was like basically just watching Mexican wrestling. It was so <laughs> so terrible. Um, that no, it's Ultraman is not for me. But yeah, no, I mean, give me a, give me a weekly Godzilla TV show, man, uh, and and uh, I will subscribe to anything you want to put that on. Note note to anyone who I'm not subscribing to currently: if you have a Godzilla TV <laughs> show, I will subscribe to your uh, you to your go. brand. Yeah, well, <laughs> and um, so I highly recommend Lovecraft Country too. By the way, uh, it's very yeah. See, that's fun. another one that theoretically I should like. Um, I haven't tried it, so I have no idea. Right. Uh, but it should theoretically be something that I would latch on to. I already know that you're going to have uh, one problem with it. Okay. Um, and it's a, it's a problem that, like, I love the show, but okay. I, even I notice it. And I just, I go, they kind of, um, the pacing is a little too fast, I think. Too fast, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many episodes they're making. I'm, I'm reading the book along with the show. So I'm only like, I'll watch an episode and then I'll read up to where that episode ends, like in the book, and I'll put it down and then next, because I don't want to know what happens. Uh, but I want to see like what's different because I don't know, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I want to see like what they changed. Um, but yeah, it, it's, I don't know like what at this point, like what has been added in, but to the, the show that isn't in the book because I haven't read through the entire book, but yeah, it moves a little too fast, I think, especially the second episode. Um, but it's really good though. I mean, it's really the only thing that I can see wrong with it. And it's educational. Um, I school. would rather a show move fast than just get bogged down with too much and be too right. slow. Like I can, I can oftentimes forgive a fast pace um, more so than like, oh my God, is, is story ever happening again? Like I, I couldn't watch, I don't know. Did you ever see... Um, now, so I forgot what it even is called. Uh, <laughs> this is how bored I am with it. Uh, Lock and Key, the Netflix thing, Lock and Key. I watched the first episode and uh, I didn't get past it. I, that's what I'm telling you. Like it was, <laughs> it was boring. It was legitimately boring. I think I did watch the second one just because I was like, well, maybe this is the origin thing and let's, let's pick up the story and go. But the second one was like just as bad. So I was like, no, I'm, I'm out. I'm, well, and you know, I, I felt neutral about it. It, it. I didn't think it was bad, but I wasn't like real. like to me, if you're going to get me to watch more than the first episode, yep. I mean, even with Game of Thrones, okay, the first episode was boring as shit, but they <laughs> laid out so much stuff that like, even though I was bored, I had to know what I, like, I, There's a I lot had to on. know what yeah. happens. They, you know, they, they set it up. So you just, you have to know, it doesn't matter if you're bored or not. There's so many characters and so many like little threads that they, you know, put in there. But like with Lock and Key, I was just kind of like, eh, I mean, wasn't bad. Wasn't good. Yeah. Eh? Like I'll get to it eventually just to see what happens, but I didn't care enough to like go right back, which is yeah. what I typically do when I yeah. really like something. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it was the same thing with the haunting of the haunting of Hill house, I think is what it was called. Yeah. I still haven't even finished it. I just remembered right now that I never finished it. Um, and it, again, it was because the pacing was so weird and so slow and it was trying too hard to be, I think it was trying too hard to be creepy and scary that it just, it wasn't. And, and I'm, I, I don't know, was there eight episodes? I think I did five of them. Wow. And I'm just now remembering like, oh, I never even finished that thing. I really like that, but I can definitely see what you're saying about like, there's some pacing issues and, but I like overall, I actually really like the story. And um, I think there's a, there's a good payoff at the, like, as if you continue okay. to watch it, the payoff is worth it okay. in my opinion. Um, so I can see what you're saying, but for me, um, it, even those episodes that I was kind of like, eh, on, I still wanted to know what happened. It didn't like push me away, which sometimes that, that that's as good as you're going to be. You didn't make me hate you. <laughs> I'll come back for a little bit more, I guess. <laughs> oh my God. There That's you funny. Go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I, I, everybody knows me. I'm notoriously difficult on things, but. Um, you really are. 
<laughs> generally <laughs> speaking, generally speaking, I can talk my way out of anyone's argument who's like, no, let me tell you about why it's good. And I'll be like, no, I'm going to tell you why it's really not. Um, and and uh, <laughs> there was, a, a, there was a, a Star Wars discussion, you know, the infamous Star Wars discussion mm -hmm. um, where someone, I don't remember exactly what it was because it doesn't matter. I shrugged it off and it went away immediately. Um, it was talking something about Kylo and Force Awakens versus Rise or what, I don't remember what it was. And I went in with, with my explanation of one, two, three, four, five. Right. Did you even watch the movie? And, and it, the whole thing just shut down. Like, that's it. Like the, the thread like was over. Cause they were, I, and I can only assume they were like, Oh fuck. Yeah. We kind of missed that. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and then I just, I pay, I posted a, a, a very vague uh, post on Facebook. It says I've seen force awakens more times than any of you be careful when challenging and uh you know it got some laughs, laughs and, and and whatever so um it was like when when uh when rise of sky or the middle one last jedi came out uh somebody at the store i was working at they came in and they were like uh, everybody knows that i will uh i will let you love whatever you want i will help you find whatever you want if you want deadpool if you want this if it, it doesn't matter if i like it i'm going to help you find it I'm well make yeah sure you go home with whatever you like and my opinions are my own unless you ask me <laughs> and then you're in for some shit and then, and then we get the powerpoint out and uh, uh and so this guy comes in and he's talking about uh star wars he says, hey so did you see last jedi yeah so I, yep 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 it was pretty good right i was like well you know yeah so you, you did you like it and i was like no this is the worst star wars movie ever and he was like no way and i was like let me tell you why and i started to <laughs> lay it all out you know and uh, and then when we were done, I felt bad, but he was he was laughing, but I felt bad. He was like, oh, my God, now I feel terrible for liking that movie. And I was Aww. like, and I was like, no, you can, you're you free to like it. Listen, there's plenty of bad movies that I like, but I'm also fully able to uh, to tell you this is right. not a good movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, like it's, it's utter just, trash. It's guilty pleasure garbage. Um, but it's fun, you know, and so right. uh, that that's it. Just that, that that's that's where I land on these things. And um you know, I've been a Star Wars nerd my whole life. It's it was frightening to me the other day because I was thinking about dates of these movies being released. Like Jaws was 1975, right? I was four years old when Jaws was released. I mean, like, how old am I? This is ridiculous. You, your um, old man, River. Clearly, I, truly, truly, and get off my porch. You know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I, it's it's really kind of bizarre to think how long these things have have existed. Number one, mm -hmm. but how ingrained they are in me from even that age. You know, I would have seen Star Wars when I was like six, and and it's been with me since I was you know essentially six years old. Since it existed, since I've existed, Star Wars has existed, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's wild to to think about all this stuff. All these like Jaws had a forty fifth anniversary this year. I'm like, oh. My god <laughs> what i don't know <laughs> how i feel about that it's terrible well you know and some of my favorite movies actually a lot of my favorite movies came out before i was even born mm -hmm. and i and i found them you know obviously as i as i grew up like the exorcist is my 100 mm -hmm. favorite horror movie and nothing is good as you know a lot of movies have been nothing can like dethrone that for me and I, that was that was a while before my time mm -hmm. um and so I think, you know, there are certain movies that even if they're not like part of your generation or, you know, whatever, like they can stick with you in those ways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think for you having that, the Star Wars experience at six, like, did you go to a movie theater and see oh, yeah. it? So, I have okay, vivid so, memories of every time I went and saw these movies. So yeah. And so like, that is a moment that is going to stay with you. And even if you hadn't seen it at a movie theater, the first time you saw it, you know, you probably would have had a good positive feeling about it because something that was like incredible. And so, yeah, I mean, don't feel old that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not old, Tom, you're just, you're seasoned. Oh, okay. okay. All right. And being All right. seasoned is good, right? I like that. I feel I like, like it is. <laughs> I like that. Uh, we're getting close to time here. So, um, before we wrap it up, uh, what, 
Uh, give everybody some details on the Kickstarter and um, the convention that you're doing online. So they sure. can search, yeah. it, search it out. And also uh, be sure to post about it on our Facebook page. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so tomorrow is the Kickstarter launch. We will be live on Facebook uh, Wendy and CB and I uh, for about an hour before we launch. That'll be two o'clock and we actually launch at three o'clock Eastern time. Um, we're going to be the actual Kickstarter is for a 64 page anthology book that will have uh, my book catnip uh, CB Zane's uh, sci fi adventure uh, mighty might and uh, Wendy Shaner's um, sirenus from her naughty fairies book. Um, so it'll be three 20 page stories all put together in one big book. Um, there will be variant covers, of course, Keith Garvey, Steph Wilson, Edwin Zaldivar, Pedro Perez, all kinds of stuff. But regardless of which cover you buy, you will get all three books because it's one giant sized uh, monstrosity. Um, <laughs> and and, and uh, of course, there's stretch goals. We have stretch goals lined up, um, stickers and magnets and, and uh, Jesse James Comics is sponsoring the, the event as well. So um, we will get it to a stretch goal where you will get a free comic book. Uh, he has done variant covers for Marvel, DC, Image, Oni Press, you know, Star Wars. Uh, My dogs Spider-Man. are so excited. That's right. See, it's, 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 it's infectious, clearly. Uh, and so the, the stretch goal for, for Jesse James is you're going to get a free book. It might be Star Wars, it might be Rick and Morty, it might be you know, Spider-Man could be anything from his um, exclusives that he's done over the years. So you'll get a free book from Jesse James Comics um, cool. and, and on and on and on. So, uh, and then the event is Comic Unity. So again, go to Facebook, look up, just do a search for Comic Unity. We'll pop up right at the top, join the page, and we will be doing live stream feeds, panels there um, on our own pages, on Kickstarter itself. Um, all that kind of thing. So, uh, but if you go to Comic Unity, that group, because it's a group, every time we post something, you'll get an announcement. So that's the easiest way to make sure that you're getting all of the information uh, and sort of dodging the Facebook algorithms. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. It, they're making it so hard because now that people are relying on it more, it, they're making it so difficult and it's such a pain. But, yeah. you know, we're, we're working on ways around it. That's right. That's <laughs> Again, right. It's, it's all about adapting. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we do. Um, I'm trying to think, do I have anything going on? Uh, I am currently finishing Aeonian 4. It's taken me forever. And it, it, it's because uh, I have, it, it, this has always been my problem. Anytime I do an arc, like when, I, when I'm closing it, it's always the hardest one for me to write. Like the first three flew out super easy. And this one, I, it's like I'm le like sending my kid off to college and I feel like I'm never going to see it again. So like writing the last uh, book in an arc always takes me longer. So I feel really bad, but it's almost done. <laughs> it's going to be really, really good. Um, and we'll get that. It'll be out on Kickstarter uh, probably early next year, depending cool. on when uh, my artists and my colorists and my letterer are all super busy. And so we're trying to make it all work. So we'll get it to you as soon as we can. And I'm working on a couple other things, but whatever. We'll talk about that next time. We're going to yeah. wrap it up for today. It was good chatting with you, Tom. Yes. I hope everything goes awesome for you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank I'm you. sure it will. You always have, a, you know, you always have awesome Kickstarters. People love them. So, and you know, everybody loves uh, Steph's covers because the huge boobs, you know, <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's like a bonus, right? Yep. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm Stephanie, this is Tom, and we will see you in two weeks.